the last time we saw Josh Berkman. He had an incredible 41-second victory over John Fitch. That is it. For Steve Carl, it was a rear naked chokehold that took down Tyson Steele in 92 seconds. Man, he saw an opening. Duke it, boom, over. Tonight, they meet for the first World Series of Fighting welterweight title. And it comes to you next. to Bank United Center in Coral Gables, Florida. Tonight, World Series of Fighting Six. Alongside Boss Rutten and Joey Varner, I'm Todd Harris, and tonight the belt is on the line. Josh Berkman looks to take the hardware back to Salt Lake City. And Berkman has been on a tear as of late, but tonight he may face his toughest test here on the campus of the University of Miami. His opponent, the always dangerous Steve Carl, looking to make a name for himself and walk away with the strap himself. That is the main event tonight, just one of an action-packed card. Also in the Bantamweight division, Marlon Moraes, the explosive young Brazilian, taking on Carson Beebe. In the welterweight division, John Fitch looking to bounce back against Marcelo Alfaia. But we will kick things off with Justin Gaethje taking on Dan Lozon in the lightweight division. We send it inside the cage. That's where Jazz Securo has our official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the World Series of Fighting Six. We are live at the Bank United Center in Coral Gables, Florida. We would like to welcome those that are viewing live on NBCSN. This event is under the auspices of the Florida State Boxing Commission. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get right to the main card. It is, takes place in the World Series of Fighting Lightweight Division. Let's bring them out. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Decagon, Dan. And Lozon. Dan Lozon makes his way inside Bank United Center. Very impressive young man. Now remember, he's the younger brother of USC veteran Joe Lozon. But I'll tell you, Boss Rutten, after an 18-month layoff, Dan looked very impressive in his third-round victory over John Gunderson. He took the fight to Gunderson from the opening bell, and while the game Gunderson refused to fall under the relentless attack of Lausanne, he won a unanimous decision. You know, he can do everything. From 70 wins, he's got nine knockouts, seven submissions, only one decision. This guy likes to finish his opponents. All right, boss, what are the keys to victory if you're in the camp of the upgrade, Dan Lozon? Well, I would say keep it on the feet, but if he feels that there's a takedown when he sees Gaethje is loading up, go for it. He might surprise him. Just stay outside the reach of his opponent and counter his power shots, since you can see those coming as long as you stay calm. And for the young man from Massachusetts, he gave us his thoughts on his fight tonight with Justin Gaethje. My strategy for the fight is to just come out and, uh, you know, be patient, take my time, and uh, use my experience. Um, he's very aggressive, and uh, I'm just looking to, uh, you know, use my experience to, uh, to win this fight. So Lausanne is inside and ready to go. He is coming off that big win in World Series of Fighting Three over John Gunderson. But can he get the victory tonight over a very difficult and challenging Justin Gaethje? And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome his opponent, making his way to the Decagon. Please welcome Justin Gaethje. Democron, Decagon. Justin Gaethje, young man, just 24 years of age, out of Denver, Colorado. A very impressive kid. He comes in here and he's got one speed, boss. 
full speed ahead. In a battle of the lightweights, Justin faced off against the impressive Brian Cobb, and they went toe-to-toe -to -toe for three rounds with each gaining an advantage at times, but it was Gagey's repeated leg kicks that took down Cobb at 219 of the third round. He's a very strong guy, and I said it before, he throws single shots. Gotta watch out for that. A lot of power in his hands, great wrestling, his keys to victory, short combinations, quick movement right away after his combination. But combinations, two and three shots, that's what I want to see. And when in trouble, take the fight to the ground, nobody's going to expect it. Ground and pound with his power, that's going to be sick. Well, those are Boss's keys to the victory. What does Justin Gaethje feel that he needs to do to get the win tonight here in South Florida? Taking my time, you know, and not not necessarily trying to rush in for the for the knockout, you know, get it too quickly. I need to start, you know, using a lot more setups, you know, set up my big shots. As we take a look at the tail of the tape, Gaethje, 24 years of age, 5'10", checked in at 155.8 pounds. There you see his reach. Dan Lozon is 25 years of age, 6 feet tall and a little heavier, and an inch and a half reach advantage. The rules of the World Series of Fighting are simple. A 10-point must system is in effect. Three judges score the fight. It's all based on effective striking, grappling, aggression, and, of course, cage control. And the WSOF no kicks or knees to the head of a grounded opponent. We now set it inside the cage. Jazz Securo has the official introductions. Here we go, fight fans. Here we go, South Florida. Time for our first fight of the night. And now, this fight is scheduled for three rounds in the World Series of Fighting Lightweight Division. Introducing fighting out of the blue corner. His record, 17 wins versus four defeats. He is currently riding a five-fight win streak. He stands six feet tall. He weighed in at 158 pounds even. Fighting out of East Bridgewater, Connecticut. Introducing Dan the Upgrade Lozal. His opponent on my left, fighting out of the red corner, an impressive record with nine victories, no defeats, seven wins coming by way of knockout. He stands five feet ten inches tall and weighed in at an even 156 pounds. He fights out of Denver, Colorado, presenting Justin the Highlight Gaethje. And when the action begins, the referee in charge is Jorge Alonso. So here we go in the lightweight division to get things underway on NBCSN. Justin Gaethje taking on Dan Lozon. <laughs> Dan is all red right there on his head. You see, he's been slapping himself silly. Oh, fair. In typical Gaethje up. fashion, he's going to come out and he is going to push the pace. And that's what I thought was going to happen. I thought that the upgrade was going to come forward. Push him backwards because then you take the striking skills away from your opponents. Very hard to fight backwards. Look at that. Yeah, against a great wrestler, very hard to take him down. Like I said, you see, on this short distance, even you can see there's power in those engages. Oh, shots. wow. Ay, ay, ay. They come together. Dan Lozon. Now, remember, he's only gone the distance in his career twice, and that's out of 21 professional fights. So, I don't know if Justin Gaethje would want to take this thing a full three rounds. And at the pace they're going, boss, it'd be surprising if they get out of the first oh, round. He hit him behind the ear. Oh, he still looks fresh. These guys are throwing <laughs> power shots. Look at this. And combinations now coming from Gaethje, which is something I was talking about the last yeah. time we saw him fight. He didn't do. He's got so much power. Why not? I always say, if one is good, two is better. Dirty. Oh! And he catches him with a back elbow. Love that. Body shot. Hard, too. And again. And Gaethje is just keying off right now as Lausanne does not seem to have an answer. I think he might have hurt him there with that body shot. He should start throwing knees to the body now. It doesn't matter that Lausanne has the hand there. Just knee on the hand. I'll tell you what, Dan Lausanne loads up that left. It connects on Gaethje. He's in trouble. The thing with Lausanne is he can go. And he can take a shot. Yep, no question. He's got a lot that. of stamina. The longer it goes, it might be more in favor for him. 
<laughs> that kick was hard as well. Early Fury coming from again. Justin Gaethje as we go under three minutes to go in this one. It's scheduled for three rounds. Okay, the steam is off a little bit, Litch. Let's see what the hands still do. There's a lot of power in there. Oh, nice look at that. From right to the left straight. Love it. And now again, he throws combination, but he goes straight forward. Forgets his feet, his foot setting. Halfway through round number one. Gaethje in the white trunks, Lausanne in the black trunks. Oh, nice there. Right up a cut miss, but the left is connected. Knees to the head. You know, Lausanne has to watch out. He hits the top of the head from Gaethje all the time. He might break his hand. Gaethje ducks forward. He should fake it left and throw a right uppercut. Uh, sorry, fake, fake a right and throw a left uppercut. He's a southpaw. Oh, that connected. And the base these guys are going. Boss, these are two tough cats, and it looks like Lausanne got hurt on that last kick. Yeah, these kicks are so hard. And now the focus will be on those kicks, so it takes a little bit away from the head. And that means that Gaethje probably is going to start raining down punches again. Oh! Really problematic on the right leg of Dan Lausanne. He should start switching stance now. He cannot stay there. If he's going to get two or three more times, this could be the end. 80 seconds to go here in round number one. And that's a long time when you're hurt. Gaethje should stop back, just throw the inside low kicks. Let him walk forward and fire. Left hook, right inside low kick. I don't know why he's... Look at this. It's very nice throwing the, some shots to the legs as a setup. Uh-oh. Yes. Lausanne's in trouble. Dan Lausanne is in trouble as Justin Gaethje is just teeing off on the right leg. And Gaethje says, I'm not even going to go to the ground with you. Make him put some weight on that right leg. Yeah, he's switching stance now. And he has to. He's going to catch kick that one more time. He can almost can't oh. walk. Yeah. This is going to be his best defense. And Gaethje continuing to target the right leg. He says, I don't want to go down there. Why not? With 23 seconds to go here in round number one, can Lausanne hold on? Justin Gaethje, this is exactly what he does. Yes, Those inside leg kicks. He should throw knees now. Inside knees to the thighs. And it looks like Dan Lausanne will hold on, and we will see a second round here in Florida. Back in okay. Coral Gables, Florida. Let's look at this Over one here. more time, boss, with the kicks. Boom. I mean, just teed Mark off. Mark yep. Peace. That's what happens when one of them is a southpaw. You can throw inside low kicks with the power leg. But Lausanne should understand he can do the same thing. Figure out just how much damage Gaethje has done. And you look at the stance and the movement of Dan Lausanne. And he is in a bit of pain right there. And Gaethje's going to go right back at it. This is, this, is <laughs> exactly for the what, this is exactly what Gaethje did in his last fight. This is so reminiscent of something that Jose Aldo would do. He's going for the other leg, like a Tony oh. Montana. And now the other leg. Eh? So it's the right leg right now of Dan Lausanne that really is giving him problems. And Gaethje, as Boss Rutten pointed out, he's now targeting the left leg of Lausanne. Some stiff punches there from Lausanne. He's still in the game. I told you, this guy is tough. Don't count him out. Gaethje should really look for the feet of Lausanne as soon as he switches inside low kick again. And from here, knees to the thighs. Oh, big straight left from Lausanne. Oh, the uppercut. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, he is just yeah, 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 cutting yeah. the tree down is Justin oh, Gaethje. Nice uppercut there from Lausanne. Oh, the outside leg. 
and the inside. It's going to go Boss, to work on both legs. We've both been around this fight game long enough to know that as much pain as Lozana is in right now and how difficult tomorrow morning could be even worse. Oh, this whole week, every time he goes to the restroom. Oh, oh that that's could it. Be it. That is it. Justin Gaethje has shut it down. Man. You know what? I said it before to some people. If Gaethje's going to pull this off and he can knock him out or stop him anyway, he is on a roll. This guy is going to go far. So Justin Gaethje, the 24-year-old out of Denver, Colorado, remains perfect and goes into double-digit victories. Now 10-0 and, oh, and his second big win. Make it third big win in the World Series of Fighting. Wow. <laughs> Let's look at it one more time, boss. Lozon already in trouble, working off of two heavily damaged legs, and oh. here he comes. Oh. Big right hook and an uppercut while he was going down. Unreal. Sick power in his hands, sick powers in his kicks. Yeah, he's the real deal. So Justin Gaethje gets the victory in the second round in the lightweight division. We will back with the official decision from Bank United Center when we return to Coral Gables, Florida. The lead up to the fight is a pretty incredible thing. I get into this time warp, like nothing else matters but the moment that I'm in. I just start to feel Invincible. The reason that I train in mixed martial arts is for that moment. The People's the World Series of Fighting Six is brought to you by Boost Mobile. Be heard. Back inside Bank United Center on the campus of the University of Miami. Todd Harris, Boss Rutten, as we send it inside the cage for the official decision from Jazz Securo. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jorge Alonso has seen enough and stopped this fight at one minute and 40 seconds of round number two. Officially, this is a techno technical knockout due to strikes. Your winner, Justin, the Highlight Cage. Let's take a look at our highlights courtesy of Boost Mobile in the first round action pack coming from Justin Gaethje, but it really was that second round, boss, where Gaethje turned it up, already attacking the leg, and here we go, coming forward and just working on Lausanne, finding it from multiple levels. Look at that spinning back elbow to the temple. A beautiful round, total domination here. It's just what speed, like you said it, full speed. Comes forward, will not go back. And here was the end. Gaethje getting it done and the TKO. Justin Gaethje standing by with our Joey Varner. Justin Gaethje, congratulations on a devastating knockout. It was your punches that put him away, but for the second fight in a row, it was your leg kicks that did the damage. Was that your strategy coming into this fight? Uh, my strategy is always just to work hard, man. I take the opportunities I get. I definitely saw him playing his feet, so yeah, I was trying to tee off on that leg. You started chopping away at that of the first round. He could barely walk back to his corner. Would you surprised that he came out for the second? No, I knew from the beginning that this, this was one of my toughest opponents I was going to face, and it's the toughest opponent I have faced. You know, he has heart, and that's what I respect. Well, once again, congratulations on your performance. Thank you. I appreciate everything. Awesome. So Justin Gaethje gets the victory tonight in Coral Gables, Florida, and runs his record to 10-0. and 0. When we return, much more fighting from Bank United Center, plus some big news from the World Series of Fighting Six. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the center of the ring where we are excited to award the Boost Mobile Rattle of the Cage Award to George Katakanyan. The Cage Rattler of the Night Award is how you, the fans, have your voice heard. The winner is chosen by the fans and is up to you to decide which fighter rattled the cage like no other. Let's take a look back at Katakanyan's highlights for that impressive fight. That's to turn his foot in though, he has to watch out if he goes for the inside look. And he's got him in a triangle, and this could be the end already. Karakanyan, tough on the ground. 11 of his 21 wins have come by way of submission. He's got an arch his shoulder back, and he's, and he's doing it's it, over. Over. Georgie, congratulations on this award. What do you think it was about your fight that made the fans reach out, be heard, and vote for you? You know, the difference with my fight was I put an exciting show for the fans, and I won with the, you know, with the great victory with the guillotine, and you know they like the way I fight. I always put exciting fights for the fans, you know. What does it mean for you to to win this award? It means a lot, you know. It means that that the fans went out there and reached out, and you know they voted for me, and it means that you know I have a lot of, you know, I have a good fan base. And... Awesome. Well, congratulations again. And ladies and gentlemen, remember, this is your chance to be heard. Vote by tweeting the favorite fan's last name with the hashtag Rattle the Cage. You decide who wins this award. Congratulations once again. Thank you very much, Joey Vonner, alongside Boss Root, and I am Todd Harris. Glad to have you with us tonight here in beautiful Coral Gables, Florida. We've made the way to South Beach, and what a way to start the night. Justin Gaethje sent a little bit of a message to the rest of the field. Oh, yes, the biggest test yet, and I said if he beats him, and if he decisively beats him, this guy is going to go high, and I, I really see belt material in this person. Unbelievable power, unbelievable kicks in it, kicking power, hand power, everything. He's got an everything and plus stamina. That's a big thing. Very talented young man. You saw how he went after Dan Lozon with the leg kicks, but he's not just about the leg kicks, even though that's the way he won his last fight. That's it. You know, he started focusing on the leg, then he started limping. So all the focus from Lozon goes to the legs, and then he comes back on top again with punches, and that's how we finished the fight. Let's talk about the main event as we will give out the first belt of World Series of Fighting history. It is Berkman and Carl, and Josh Berkman, the people's warrior, has been on an absolute tear as of late. This might be the best shape he's been in his whole career. Yes, the best shape, but I think he's going to face one of the best opponents as well. I mean, Steve Carl, last six wins, all by submission, all in round number one. He grabs a hold of you, it's going to be a problem. Can Bergman keep it on his feet, or is he going to say, listen, my ground game is very good as well, I'll take you down. Well, interesting, it all plays out tonight here live on NBCSN. Also, big news for the World Series of Fighting, we are going Going international as we take us north of the border Vancouver Canada get your tickets on sale now December 7th 2013 as we make our way to British Columbia right now Joey Varno is standing by with the president of the World Series of Fighting Ray Seffo I'm joined with World Series of Fighting Ray Seffo and Ray you've got some exciting news to share with us yes absolutely uh, right here to my right is the guy son and I wanted to welcome him, and uh, we'll be working with him uh, to start World Series of Fighting Japan. World Series of Fighting Japan. Are there any? Are there any dates yet set? It'll be early next year for sure. Uh, there's not a definite date, but we are in talks of what you know works, and we'll probably be looking at early next year, 2014. Wow, the World Series of Fighting is heading to the land of the rising sun. Absolutely. It, it's exciting and uh, we're looking forward to it. You know, Japan is my second home, so I love it there and I'm, um, uh, you know, very excited that we're able to have an a partner like Sakai-san and, and actually be in Japan and doing the show. Great news. Boss, Todd, back to you. Coming up next, it's the welterweights on display here in Coral Gables, Florida. World Series of Fighting 6. John Fitch goes head-to-head -head with Marcelo Alfaya, live on NBCSN.
Welcome back to NBCSN's coverage of the World Series of Fighting Six from Bank United Center in Coral Gables, Florida. Todd Harris, Boss Root, and Joey Varner. Glad to have you with us for an explosive night as we take a look at the tail of the tape for this one in the welterweight division. John Fitch and Marcelo Alfaya, 35-34, 6 feet to 5'11". There you see the weights and the reach advantage to John Fitch. We now sit it inside the cage. That is where Jazz Securo has the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back at the Bank United Center in Coral Gables, Florida. This fight is scheduled for three rounds of the World Series of Fighting Welterweight Division. And now, introducing fighting out of the blue corner, his record sits with 16 wins, six defeats, and one draw. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall and weighed in at an even 172 pounds. Fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, introducing Marcelo Green. to victory very good on the ground but you know you're fighting fit so you gotta stay off the ground need to have a lot of stamina to stop the non-stop pressing action from Fitch and like I said try to keep it on the feet and go for a knockout if it does go to the ground get Fitch in the guard and now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing his opponent on my left, fighting out of the red corner, his record, 27 wins, four defeats, and one draw. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 170 pounds and a half, fighting out of Fort Wayne, Indiana, presenting John! Fitch's striking is getting better and better at, at American Academy of Kickboxing, a.k.a. He's going to non-stop push the action to take his opponent's striking away and set up the takedowns. One's on the ground, do what he does best, ground and pound. Well, John Fitch knows just how important this fight is, and he told us exactly what he wants to do once the fight begins. In order to win this fight, I have to be aggressive. I have to uh, make sure I'm avoiding his power and uh, just use pressure. Use pressure, drag him into the deep end and drown him. And when the action begins, your referee is Troy Waugh. So here we go, boss. John Fitch taking on Marcelo Alfaio in the welterweight division of the World Series of Fighting. This one's scheduled for three. Did Fitch train hard on the striking there at the American Kickboxing Academy? Ready? This is important. Are Fighter, are you ready? Fighter, are you ready? They have all these great strikers there. He's got to throw. Oh, that's too slow. He can't kick like that. He needs to go faster. There he is. Looking for the takedown. Oh, look at here. Alfaya looking for a takedown and securing it. And he's looking to step over the mount. He might jump over there. Only one more need to pass. See if he actually is going to do it. Fit should be ready for this. He should keep pushing there. Keep pushing up with his right knee. He cannot let him step over. Boston, one of your keys to victory, you talked about keeping the pace up. Who does this slower pace, more methodic pace favor in your opinion? Methodic pace, you well, look at the bodies. You know, uh, uh, Fitch is the lean muscle mass. He can probably has probably more endurance than Alfaya has. He's got a lot of muscle. They need a lot of oxygen. oxygen. So, uh, yeah, the slow pace fights, I think, slowly but surely. Grinding, I think, would Fitch would uh, be better than But I'm talking going into the third round. Yeah. <coughs> oh, got his back right away. Look at this. Look at this. Something that does not happen very often to John Fitch. Giving up the back to Marcelo Alfaya. Alfaya also caught the left arm of John Fitch. You see that? And he figure four locked it. So he got only one arm, his right hand, to defend rear naked chokes. He's got to stay super calm now. And if I was him, I would press my jaw against my shoulder. Don't 
do it like you're doing right now because they might slip under. It's very dangerous. Trying to get the wrist control, but at the same time, Alfaya is just popping him with those nuisance shots. He's got to break that grip with his right hand. Right now he can't do it, but Fitch has to push against the left knee of Alfaya. He's got to push that away so he can get his arm free. And it's off. It's free. Starting a oh, lot of energy nice. and now taking the back again of Fitch. Great job here. He needs that hook, otherwise he might lose control. Body triangle. This is going to make it hard to breathe for Fitch. Alfaya trying to lock up that shoulder. He, he can even go now. Uh, he's head forward. Go both uh, under arm. Uh, how do you call it? Double Nelson. Full Nelson. In Holland they call it a double Nelson. Full Nelson here. If he goes with his left arm underneath the armpits. Then he could pull off a full Nelson, that would be something. Fish just trying to find a way to pop out of this. He's got to really watch out, he can't stand. He's got to watch methodically, make sure he's, his jaw is protected and then he might go stand. Let go of his glove, John. Let go of his glove. Let go of his glove, John. Now here I'm talking about all these big muscles. Wow. They're putting a lot of oxygen in there now. A lot, a lot of lactic acid because they're pulling, 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 pulling. Yeah. And I was going to ask you, how much energy is Marcelo Alfaya exerting? I mean, he's the one that's really doing all the work and exertion. Fitch is just trying to ward him off. That's it. That's it. Exactly right. They should favor Fitch in the striking department once he goes back to the feet. Well, Faya certainly has him locked up in the midsection, unable to allow Fitch to really do anything at all as Fitch is trying to spin around, rotate, maybe use the cage as his friend, but still maintaining some kind of control on those wrists. And again, some heavy leather coming down from Alfaya. You know what Fitch was doing there? Elbowing the thigh, not a bad idea at all. But you gotta do it the right way. I'm watching close, we're good. You talked about the Mohawk rule here in Florida. It's basically if you have a Mohawk haircut, that is the reason of the head you cannot attack of your opponent. Yeah, that includes the top of the head for the people who know the normal mixed martial arts rules. You're not allowed to hit the top of the head. So the Mohawk all the way from the front to the back. Well, I think Alfaya is probably going to take this round as we go under 20 seconds. But, boss, John Fish has done a great job of just maintaining and how much energy basically has he there saved is. with Alfaya doing all the work. He shouldn't go for a takedown now. Well, he will because he's got a lot of energy. But, he, you know, I would say save the energy and go to round number two. We'll have the second round when we return to Coral Gables, Florida. This isn't a sport for just normal people. I don't know if you want to call it a challenge or you just want to call it straight crazy. Now I'm where I need to be and I plan on going to the top. Can't sing and dance, so I might as well punch somebody in the face. Oh, 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 man. That is it. Take a look at Anthony Johnson. Hey, Anthony, what's going on? Hey, Anthony, what's going on? Hey, Anthony, Steve Carl, the pride of Belle Plaine, Iowa, getting ready. He is part of the co-main event, going head-to-head -head with Josh Berkman tonight. But we've got a good battle right now inside the cage in the welterweight division. John Fitch going head-to-head -head with Marcelo Alfaya. Boss Rutten, I'd have to say, I'd probably give that one to Alfaya, but yep. Fitch did a great job defensively of warding off all the submission attempts that Alfaya was trying to throw at him. Yeah, and now we're going to see if Alfaya spent a lot of energy, because Fitch is coming forward, and he knows he needs to, know, to win the next two rounds. He's going to take him down. This is Fitch's game. Yep. And look at the power. If Fitch is going to fight like he fought against Eric Silver, leg lock attempt here from Alfaya. He's got to watch out. Good wow. escape here from Fitch. Fitch just rains down a big shot, puts Alfaya up against the cage. And again, Alfaya grabs the leg. What Fitch can do now is he can sit on that hand. Oh, because then he has wow. no defense there. Fitch got to pull this up. He cannot allow this guy to take him down. Alfaya, if he gets him on the ground, that is not a good thing. He needs to get back up. Alfaya showed in the first round he can keep him down. 
So John Fitch comes out at the start of round number two with a big flurry. He gets Alfaya to the ground, and it's Alfaya once again taking Fitch's back. Fitch is out. Beautiful escape. Look at this. And he's pushing, pushing, pushing. This is Fitch's game plan. When he fought Eric Silva, and Eric Silva was one of those guys that I thought would go to the top, I mean, Fitch was all over him. And that's how we started round number two now. If we see that Fitch, he's going to win this fight. John Fitch in the black trunks, Marcelo Alfaya in the white trunks. Alfaya looks so much stronger. And boss, I think for the folks at home that aren't familiar with MMA, this takes out a lot of energy. The defense and the and the tight clinch up against the cage. Both guys are not just relaxing on each other, leaning on each other. They're both trying to break that hold and trying to improve their position. Yeah, Alfaya's leaning forward. There's a constant pressure on his core. That fills up with leg that that's it. And what I always say, your lungs are behind your core. And it starts pressing, filling up, bloating up, like, like bodybuilders, I would almost say. And starts pressing your lungs away. There's a lot of stress here now. John Fitch trying to break that clinch of Alfaya. And uh, Joe Fitch is constantly having those underhooks. It's like having a little uh, kid in your hand. Well, a little, a big one. And lifting it the whole time, whole time. And that's why it's so hard. Right, right run when they break, it's going to be hard for them to strike. Because now they've been pulling, pulling, yeah. pulling. And the striking is pushing, pushing, pushing. Or with a snap, of course. So John Fitch right now has got himself a bit of a defensive stance here up against the cage. Alfaya's got his head down, trying to control Fitch. Fitch should really start working here. He should trust his gas tank and go full blast. Pull him up with everything he's got. Then again, Alfaya is super strong. Just the way if you look at him, it's already, you just see strength. It all comes down to who can impose whose will on their opponent. And right now, both these men are locked into it. Look at that. As Alfaya is able to pick up Fitch and immediately takes the back again. And back escape. I wanted to say he's going to do a backdoor escape. He's going to do it. Yep, there yep. he is. <laughs> Beautiful. He doesn't want to repeat of run number one. There he nice uppercut here by John Fitch. Fitch connects on the uppercut. Alfaya looks gassed. Yeah, and dazed a little bit. And you can see his muscles, his shoulders. You see, they're all bloated up right now. Just put it a lot of like that's it in there. Punches start being less effective. Alfaya comes back with a nice uppercut. Yep. Coming up on a minute to go here in number round number seven. two. I had to expect that from somebody who was born on the same day as me. John Fish, he just threw a liver shot. February 24th. Nice. Nice knee as well. Fitch now slowly putting together some nice combinations. He's got to pull him up. He's got to pull him up. He's got to pull the hands up. He's got to do something. The fire's going to take him down again. Oh, fire. That's it. Pushing your hands up. He's 30, 30 seconds to go in this round. You see, the longer the fight goes, I told you. It's going to favor Fitch, I think, because Alfaya still has a lot of power. It's John Fitch and Marcelo Alfaya as we come to the end of round number two. And we will see a third and final round in the welterweight division when we return to Coral Gables, Florida. Cat Kelly doing the ring card girl obligations tonight here at Bank United Center, Coral Gables, Florida, World Series of Fighting Six. And this is a good one in the welterweight division. John Fitch, Marcelo Alfaya, and Boss Rutten. I think I've got this one one round apiece. I think so too. And uh, what I said before, my, my question is answered. John Fitch definitely worked hard on the striking. Looking great in round number two. Connected with a few shots. Alfaya seems to be more tired, but he's coming forward and he's got a lot of power. So I might be mistaken as well. 
Fitz does look to be the crisper fighter here in the early parts of round three. Alfaya, though, as Boss pointed out, has a ton of power. Oh, there's that uppercut again. Now, Fitch fought a lot of fights yep. and a lot of three-round fights. So he's been here. This is home turf for him. Great pro. With 4.10 to go in this fight, we check in ringside with Joey Varner. I was in the... Get off! Thanks, Todd. I was in the corner of John Fitch, and his coaches are imploring him to keep the fight standing. They say keep your back off the fence, take control of the center of the cage, let your hands go, and you'll win this fight. Yeah, that's good advice, don't you think, boss? I think so, too. Yep. Yeah. you got to watch out with his back against the fence, though. So as Joey said it, he had his back against the fence. And I imagine if Joey Varner could be in two places at once, Alfaya's group would have said, get him to the ground. Oh, yeah. Oh, Fitch is just Man, we see a new and improved John Fitch here. Look at that. Oh. And you've got to think in the back of John Fitch's mind, he wants this victory so bad so he could get another shot at Josh Berkman, who fights later tonight. Wow. And that was in his head in the training camp. I bet you had a picture of Berkman on the back. You go, well, I'll be back with you. Three minutes to go in this one. Fitch has got the bear hug here. That's better than a double under. It's going to be hard. Although Lafaya, Alfaya, sorry, is so strong, he's got to watch out for a hip toss. You know, if this fight does go the way of John Fitch, you've got to think Marcelo Alfaya, after oh, two yes. rounds, thinks he had it. But it's that third round that John Fitch has really turned it on. You know, he just scored another right body shot, the two shots to the head. Look at wow. this. Everything is a hit. His big body lock throws him up against the cage. He wants to take the fight to the ground now, wants to be on top. He's got to watch out. I would say keep the corners game plan. Look at this, up against beautiful sprawl. Make Alfaya do all the work. And this late in the fight, I, I mean, as strong as Alfaya is, I don't know if he has the strength to get Fitch up off the ground for a slam. He's got to pull, Fitch has got to pull, Alfaya's got to pull, he's got to pull his toes to the side. Can he lock his hands? Almost. But it's a little too high, he wants to be a little lower, but because of the wide stance of Fitch, he can. Uh, this is fantastic. Both these guys absolutely gas boss rooting and still going at it. Wow. One and a half minutes, Fitch connect again with the right. Under 90 seconds. Oh, high kicks. Fitch came in with all kinds of force, and Alfaya's in trouble. Wow, big shots from Fitch here. These are power shots. Man, he wants to finish this fight. He's got to keep sprawling, push him down. Under a minute to go, how is Alfaya fighting back after that punishment he just took? God, this guy is very tough. I mean, he took five clean shots to the grill from John Fitch, and he has the wherewithal to scramble up and try to lock him up. Let me push him up against the fence. He might try to go for another takedown. Fitch is throwing uppercuts underneath the armpit. Nice hip movement here from Fitch. He knows it's only 25 seconds. Alfaya climbs it back, but Fitch throws him off. And that's going to about do it with 15 seconds to go. Alfaya just has nothing left in the gas. But still coming back up. What a fight. Wow. For the official decision, you're watching World Series of Fighting 6 from Coral Gables, Florida. The World 
series of Fighting Six from Miami, Florida is brought to you by Boost Mobile. Be heard. And by CureFA.org. Help us with the fight against Friedrich's Atoxia. Back inside Bank United Center in Coral Gables, Florida, at the conclusion of an exciting welterweight bout between John Fitch and Marcelo Alfaya, we go inside the cage. Jazz Secura has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of fighting, we will go to the judges' scorecards for your winner, and they have given us a split decision. What? Judge Tim Vanetta scores at 29-28, Fitch. Judge Rich Green scores at 29, 28, Alfaya. And Judge Elicio Rodriguez scores at 29, 28 for your winner by split decision, John Fitch! John Fitch gets the win by split decision. As we take a look at the Boost Mobile highlights, round number one, boss, I think clearly it was Marcelo Alfaya that got that one. Yep, that was his round all over him. A lot of power, a lot of force. Got him in a body triangle, caught his arms. Did everything right. Round number two, John Fitch comes out with a flurry early on, and Alfaya weathered it, and then he started to get after it, but it was John Fitch early, clearly, in the first minute, minute and a half. Yes, and I, I think he, he was going very strong. Look how he escapes here. We have another one that escaped the back door. Look at that uppercut landing really hard. And the third and final round, I say this one is all John Fitch. It was, everything he hit was almost uh, connected. Look at that, uppercut left, dude. Those punches, yeah. So I didn't see the split decision. And we sent it inside the cage. Joey Werner has our winner. John Fitch, congratulations on your victory. It was a back and forth battle. When that bell rang to end the fight, how confident were you that you did enough to get the decision? I was fairly confident I did enough. I did a lot of damage, a lot of striking, a lot of boot stuff on top. Uh, he was able to control a lot of positions on me, which I wasn't expecting because he was really strong. But uh, you know, I don't think that was enough to, to win a fight. He did a great job of controlling the positions. He also did a great job of taking you down. Were you surprised at his wrestling? A little bit. I mean, he was so strong against the fence. I, I couldn't, I couldn't make the room I needed to, uh, to, to get away and, and uh, escape. Tonight in the main event, it's first ever World Series of Fighting welterweight title on the line. Who do you like, Berkman or Carl? Man, it's, it's tough to pick, but I got, I got to pull for, for Berkman because I want, I want that rematch and I want to do it for the belt. Awesome. Well, once again, congratulations on your victory. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, guys. Love you, Miami. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, John Fitch. Nice. So Fitch gets the victory, and we move on for two more great fights tonight. We will visit with Marlon Moraes, the bantamweight sensation of the World Series of Fighting. We'll have his fight. We'll talk to the Brazilian fighter when we return to Coral Gables, Florida. people have watched the Premier League on NBC Sports. Tomorrow morning, it's a clash between bitter rivals Sunderland and Newcastle. Coverage begins tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern, only on NBCSN. Still to come in our co-main event, 25-year-old Marlon Moraes, originally from Brazil, now making his home here in South Florida. An explosive young man once he gets inside the cage. My dream as a fighter is be fighting with the best guys in the world. I'm from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and I have been fighting for 16 years. Brazil is not easy. I'm from a poor neighborhood and poor family, and it's hard. My cousin, he used to train kickboxing, but I've never been thinking about being a fighter. 
My first fight, I was nine years old. I fought with the gloves, without chain guards, without headgear. It's kind of dangerous, but I, ha I had so much fun. Be fighting, the competition, the adrenaline, and I realized that I was doing something that I love to do now. Big combinations coming from Marlon Moraes, his MO. He works fast, gets to the inside, wow. I had an opportunity to come here to America and really start to live with the sport, start to teach, and this was very important for me. Marlon Moraes hammering away. Marlon Moraes trying to end this thing in the first round. When I'm out there, I'm not trying to copy anybody. I'm trying to be myself. When I win, I'm really done thinking about myself. I'm thinking about how many people are happy with this moment. Coming up next, the co-main event, Marla Moraes and Carson Beebe. The Bantamweights take center stage when the World Series of Fighting 6 returns. Welcome back to the World Series of Fighting 6. Todd Harris along with Boss Root and Joey Varner. We are just about set for the co-main event of the night in the Bantamweight division. Marla Moraes taking on Carson the Little Juggernaut BB. This should be a fantastic and, folks, a very explosive fight as we take a look at the tail of the tape. Marla Moraes is 25 years of age, 5'6", 136 was his weight. Carson BB, 25 years of age as well, 5'7", and also 136. Right now, we set it inside the cage. Jazz Securo has the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all set at the Bank United Center for your co-main event of the night. It is brought to you by Hit Supplements. Three rounds in the World Series of Fighting Bantamweight Division. And now, introducing fighting out of the blue corner. His record, 14 wins, two defeats. He stands 5 feet 7 inches tall and weighed in at 136 pounds. He fights out of Chicago, Illinois. Introducing Carson Little Juggernaut Beebe. He needs this fight on the ground, uses wrestling skills to do it to set it up, but strikes though. Avoid the guard, stay in half guard, side mount or mount, and go for ground and pound. And now, ladies and gentlemen, his opponent on my left, fighting out of the red corner. His record sits with 11 wins, 4 defeats, and 1 draw. He stands 5 feet 6 inches tall and also weighed in at an even 136 pounds. He fights out of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Marlon Moraes! is good everywhere, but in this fight, he's the better striker for sure. So keep the fight on the feet, and when it does go to the ground, get BB in his guard and try to get back on the feet. And when the action begins, ladies and gentlemen, your referee is Jorge Alonso. Okay. Soy Jorge. Here we go. It's the co-main event oh. World Series of Fighting Six. And folks, <laughs> this is how it's going to be for three rounds if it goes that far. And look at the angles that Mariah's cutting. Non-stop moving to the side. Already connecting with some big bombs. Great takedown defense. I'll tell you what, Carson Beebe maybe surprised everyone in the MMA world by Oof. adopting this tactic going straight at Marla Moraes. Oh, another uppercut. The Lance already a few uppercuts. There he goes. It's the end. That is it. Oh! This was beautiful. This was art. The way he moved to the side. Whoa. And Moraes absolutely rocking Carson Beebe. I don't believe he's ever been knocked out. He's only been submitted once and a decision once. Had a 
feeling this one was going to be over quickly for either BB or Marais. Marlon Marais absolutely took everything BB had because he came right at him. And Voss, I give him credit for trying this because a lot of guys let Marais bring the fight to them. He said, you know what? I'm going to go right at him, but maybe not the wisest move. That's it because he knows he's a great striker. Holy cow, we can watch the whole thing from the beginning as BB is now up on his feet. Here we go. Already an uppercut landed. Big overhead there. Nice knee. Look how he moves to the side. This is beautiful footwork. Even Boston's up proud right now. Here comes watching the big this. one. Here comes the finisher from Marlon Moraes. That low kick I wouldn't have thrown. I would have stayed away from kicks Ball. a little bit. That's the uppercut again. He's going to land another one, I believe. Here, that's again. And now he's going to go with the big finish. That there you go. The big left that catches the chin of BB and puts him down and puts Marlon Moraes up on top. Ha. We'll be back with the official decision and talk to your champion when we return. Marlon Moraes gets it done in a very quick round. The lead up to the fight is a pretty incredible thing. I get into this time warp, like nothing else matters but the moment that I'm in. I just start to feel invincible. The reason that I train in mixed martial arts is for that moment. The People's Warrior! December 7th, the World Series of Fighting arrives in Canada for the first time for a fully loaded night of fights. Don't miss Anthony Johnson, Mike Kyle, and the return of lightweight sensation Nick Newell. That's Saturday, December 7th on NBCSN. And Marlon Moraes just moments ago, after he put Carson Beebe down, still showing it. Boss, I don't even know if he broke a sweat. I don't think so either. We send it inside the cage. Jazz Securo has the official word. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jorge Alonso has seen enough and put a stop to this fight at 32 seconds of the very first round. Officially a technical knockout. Your winner, Marlon! So Marlon Moraes gets it done, and the highlights, well, they're only 32 seconds long, brought to you by Boost Mobile. Uh, he came out fast. BB, I think, maybe said, wow, I'm going to go right at him, and Marlon said, that's fine with me. Oh, man, his footwork was off the chart. Uh, I knew it was good, but this good, the cutting, the angle side to side, I'm telling you, I said it before, professional boxers, if they look at this, they're going to go, okay. Now I get it. This is good. The left hook and just put him down. Carson Beebe taking a heavy, heavy shot from Marla Moraes, and it's Moraes who gets the win in 32 seconds of the first round. Marlon standing by with our Joey Varner. Marlon Moraes, congratulations on a devastating knockout. How great does it feel to train so hard, come out here and put on a performance like that? I don't know, man. I think only God can explain, you know. Uh, God give him the strength and the power to be here today, you know. A lot of people want to be uh, doing a simple job, and they can, you know. And I'm so glad to, to have my hands, my legs, you know, be healthy, to train hard. And that's it, man. I'm fighting here in Florida, man. I'm from Brazil, but I came to Florida three years ago. And, man, I, lo I love Florida, man. <laughs> Florida is the best place to live, you know. Everybody gets me here, you know. I I'm so happy now, man. And thank you, World Series of Fighting. Now I want to get my belt, man. You came out more aggressive than usual. You, you fists were flying, guns are blazing. Was there a sense of urgency to put him away early? Man, he's a wrestler. He comes hard to take me down. But I was ready, you know, and he was too close to, to try to take me down. I could hit him with some punches. This is what happened, you know. Well, congratulations once again on an amazing performance. Thank you, and man, this is for me, for my friends, for Nova Friburgo, for my family, you know, for my team, Ricardo Almeida. I'm so happy. Valor MMA. Thank you, guys. 
Marlon Reyes gets it done in round number one. We have still got the main event to go. Josh Berkman and Steve Carl will go head to head, but can they top the performance put up by that man? We'll visit with them when we return to Florida. Now back inside Bank United Center in Coral Gables, Tyrone Spong and Anthony Johnson taking in the fights here tonight, as is Albert Del Rio, who will also go head-to-head -head with John Cena tomorrow night, WWE. Big bout for him as he takes a moment to visit with President Ray Seffo. History will be made tonight here in Coral Gables as the first World Series of Fighting Championship belt is on the line in the welterweight division. It will either be Josh Berkman or Steve Carl. It's exciting to fight for a championship because fighting for a championship means that you're at the top of your game. Bergman has confidence. He's confident, he's calm, and uh, I think that's going to change once we get in there and start mixing it up. It doesn't matter whether I'm an underdog or a favorite. You know, I, I prepare the same way. It's mental. You can overcome anything if you want to. You know, if you really believe in yourself, you can do anything you want. Really, it's not about who I'm fighting. It's more about making myself as good as I can be so I can have the best performance I can possibly have. Is there a fighter that has a calmer demeanor inside the cage than Josh Burton? Wow! Oh, that was a powerful shot there by Burton. It's definitely going to be a fight. It's not going to be no surgical execution. Steve Carl, you know, he gets my respect. He's won six fights in a row, and anybody that's ever called me out or asked for a fight has ended up on the on the receiving end of being hurt. He's out. October 26th, you're going to see me come into this cage and dominate Josh Bergman, and I will be the first champion. This is my moment, and Josh won't take it from me. It's not going to matter because that's my belt, and at the end of the fight, it's going to get put around my waist. Coming up next, the people's warrior, Josh Bergman, tries to take the first World Series of Fighting Belt home with him. Steve Carl stands in his way. They'll get inside the cage when we return. Whoa. wants you to name the cage rattler of the night. Who impressed you the most? Tweet the last name of the fighter who refused to go unnoticed with the hashtag rattle the cage to vote. Boost Mobile, be heard. And it is official, you cannot hashtag Boss Root. He did not fight tonight, but it would be a good vote. <laughs> As we take a look at the main Get event changed. tonight, it is Josh Berkman, the People's Warrior, taking on Steve Carl in the welterweight division. This one's scheduled for five five-minute rounds. We send it inside the cage. Jazz Securo has the official introductions. Good, good, good. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for your main event of the night. It is brought to you by Boost Mobile, and we are about to crown a welterweight world champion. Let's bring him out. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Decagon, Steve Carl. fighter and it took an impressive 92 seconds in his match against Tyson Steele to earn Steve Carl his seventh straight victory. It was a back and forth match until Steele missed on a takedown and Carl locked him into a rear naked chokehold proving to be the victorious move of the night. Boss, what are the keys to victory for Steve Carl? Like Ivan Drago's coach would say, ooh, he's simple. Set up the takedowns with strikes, runs on the ground, work his submission game and destroy. 
Steve Carl making his way through our honor guard tonight. What an entrance song. Yeah. Turn me on. Carl going through his final preparations before he enters the cage. So the 28-year-old, the pride of Belle Plain, Iowa, ready to go with a belt on the line, and he has a mission in mind. I go out there to fight, and uh, but I'm a finisher. I am there to win, so when somebody does slip up, I'm going to finish. But if Berkman doesn't slip up, you guys are going to see a five-round war. So Steve Carl getting ready to enter as he's made his way through tonight's honor guard. Coming to us by way of Special Operations Command South. Our thanks to those brave men and women for participating tonight here at World Series of Fighting Six. Godspeed to all of you. Question about it. Steve Carl is set to go as he awaits his opponent. And one of the men tonight will be walking away with a brand new belt. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the World Series of Fighting Decacon, his opponent, Josh Berkman. Heptagon is seven. Decacon is well, nine. Josh Berkman may be one of the best all-around athletes we have in the world of MMA. Absolutely a specimen when it comes to just baseball, football, basketball. I mean, he can do it all. He can do it all. And he's here making a name for himself in the world of MMA. And how impressive is he? Is Josh earned his fifth straight victory with a first round technical submission win over John Fitch. He attacked early, sending Fitch to the ground and locked him into an impressive guillotine choke and gained the win in the rematch after just 41 seconds. This submission is one of the top contenders for submission of the year. Since his opponent won the last six fight all by submission in the first round, Josh is playing safe, keep the fight on the feet, and only strike. Short combinations right after every combo, move out to the side, just like Marlon Moraes did tonight. For Josh Berkman, the mission is simple. Take the belt back to Salt Lake City. My strategy in this fight is to uh, really just go out there, and it can go one of two ways. Steve Carl could be very aggressive, and if he's aggressive, um, I just have to beat him in punch, and it'll be a very fast uh, fight. Um, or we're going to go out there and be patient. It'll be more of a chess match where i got to figure out what he's trying to do. But as soon as I figure out what he's doing, I'll, uh, I'll put an end to the fight. As we take a look at the tail of the tape for this one, Josh Berkman, 33 years of age, 5'10", weighted in just under 170 pounds. His reach 72 inches, equal that of Steve Carl. Carl's 28 years of age, 6 feet tall, and the exact same weight as Berkman. The rules of the World Series of Fighting, it's a 10-point must system. Three judges score the fight. It's based on effective striking, grappling, aggression, and cage control. No kicks or knees to the head of a grounded opponent here, the World Series of Fighting. So we are set to go, the arena is full, and we are ready to crown a champion at World Woo! Series of Fighting Six. We now turn it over to Jazz Securo for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next level of mixed martial arts today. The World Series of Fighting is ready to crown a welterweight champion. And now, ladies and gentlemen, live from the Bank United Center in Coral Gables, Florida, are you ready? It's about to go down for everybody in the building and those watching live on NBCSN. Somebody make some noise. Your main event is sanctioned by the Florida State Boxing Commission. And now, introducing, fighting out of the blue corner, 
His record sits 20 wins and three defeats, 17 by finish, and he's currently riding a six fight win streak. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 169 and three quarter pounds, fighting out of Belle Plaine, Iowa, ladies and gentlemen, Steve. And now, ladies and gentlemen, his opponent for the welterweight championship. He fights out of the red corner. His record, 26 wins, 9 defeats. He is currently riding a 5-fight win streak. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall and weighed in at 169 and 3 quarter pounds. He fights out of Salt Lake City, Utah, presenting Josh, the People's War. Your referee for the main event, Mr. Troy Waugh. What? Fighters. Well, here we go, Boss Rutan. The welterweight title is on the line. Oof. Okay, is it going to go five rounds or not? Tell me. Say it now. I would be very surprised to see this go five rounds. <laughs> me too. Me too. But at the end of the night, one of these gentlemen will be the first World Series of Fighting welterweight champion. Judge, are you ready? Judge, are you ready? Judge, are you ready? Fight, are you ready? Fight, are you ready? Uh, Fight! No, Amazing no, no, right how now. calm both these guys are. <laughs> not right now. Give me five seconds. With so much on the line, here we go. Berkman in the white trunks. Carl in the black trunks. Oof. You got the tension. Boss, who is it more imperative on to get a fast start, Berkman or Carl? You know, both these guys are in tremendous shape. So uh, I think both these guys can go the full distance. But who connects first? Who, who yeah. you know, imposes his will the first most of the time? That's the guy. That's a hard kick. Berkman is impressive how he can change his stance. He's waiting for the left kick to the body, I think. Oh. Started with the kick, Carl caught it. Into the clinch they go. Bergman lifting him up. As you said before, this guy is a super athlete. Yeah. Can do anything he wants. Just chose fighting. But I'll tell you, Steve Carl, one of the strongest guys in this division. Yeah. And also great on his feet, yeah. you know, and, and, and that together combined with his uh, incredible ground game. Let's see if that could be a trouble. And now he's going to be on top, Charles. Got to watch out with that leg there. There you go, use the gate, Steve. Not, there you go. Oh, right back up. Well, both these guys are such decorated fighters, both of them former UFC fighters. Carl spent some time with the Bellator organization before signing with the World Series of Fighting back in 2012. What you made before a guillotine. He loves that choke. And he's very good at it. Does it worry you that Carl comes in at the pace he's coming in, where his hands are? I don't know, not right now. He's got the, the you would think the reach advantage he doesn't. Yeah. He's a little taller and it yeah. gives you the illusion, but they have the exact same reach, 72 inches or so. But then again, because he's taller, he does have a little more reach because he can use his length as well. Great defense coming from Josh Burke, went up against the cage. Yeah, you better believe that he trains for this because he knows he cannot go to the ground. And look how he reversed that. Beautifully done. He's got to keep his right leg pushed forward so uh, Carl can't get that butterfly out. And if Carl goes a little lower with that butterfly, he's got to watch out for a reversal. Oh, there you go. This is uh, smart from Carl because he he can play the, the submission game. You know, and if he goes for a high guard and a, and a bear hug, a simple bear hug, you right away terminate all the striking.
first power round spike. of this one scheduled for five with the welterweight belt on the line. Very nice way here. You see what Berkman is doing. Okay, we'll uh, tell you when it happens again. It's kind of a cool way to let somebody ungrip your wrist. Use it a lot. And back to full guard. It's very, it's very smart, methodical play. You know, people don't have to realize also this is round one of five. One minute to go here in round number one. He was skipping his hips there, out, out there. So he's got to maybe searching for something, like an armbar or something. Talking about Steve Carl on the ground. Here we go again, see? Go for a leg lock, toe hold here. Oh, look at this. Yeah, but he does it the wrong way. He's got to go the other way. He's got to reverse. Steve Carl has the, the correct way. Make him pay for that. That was an in inverted toe hold, I guess you'd call it. You need way more power to pull that one off. Steve Carl, Steve Carl should have wrapped his legs tight because Bergman had one around Bergman's body, keep him tight, and then uh, finish the toe hold. Final 10 seconds of round number one. This one's scheduled for five. Josh Berkman and Steve Carl, and we will go to a second round when we return to Coral Gables, Florida, and Bake United Center. World Series of Fighting Six from Bank United Center in Coral Gables, Florida. Round number two of this one scheduled for five for the welterweight belt. Josh Berkman in the white trunks, Steve Carl in the black trunks. Boss Rutten, who do you have winning that first round? <laughs> Good luck with that. Um, uh, ask me that question later into the fight because right now it's very close. I was waiting for that for a counter. Guillotine choke attempt. He's still holding on to it. Getting on back. You expect the submission really fast now. Oh, I thought Carl was right away going to jump into a submission. Steve Carl closing guard momentarily on Josh Berkman. Oh, trying to choke attempt. Yeah, he's all over the place. Both looking to pull the trigger. Yeah. Who makes the mistake here? Constantly, you see Bergman waiting for that counter right hook. Since he's a southpaw, the orthodox fighter, well, both are southpaws, but you don't train a lot with southpaws. Now the counter left to is going to be really well. They're both switching stances the yeah. whole time. Impressive. It's almost like they're mimicking each other. <laughs> Constantly that inside low kick. You see already the redness appearing there. Oh, that's a big right hand there from Carl. Job by Carl. Very well done. Yeah, she's very nice. Slipped into that. This is a dangerous position for Josh Bergman. Get up. Head position, fight the 
hands. Right. Do I want, do I want to yeah, you can see George did his homework. Yep. Now we're on position. He's got with his right arm, the right hand from Josh almost pulled behind his back. Didn't work out, though. Josh could pull out. Very strong. And Steve you know, Carl now teeing off on Berkman, and Berkman wisely gets out of that situation. The one thing impressed about with Josh Berkman is even when he's in a bad situation, he seems to always have a sense of calm about him. There's not a lot of panic in this guy. Yeah, no, but you have. You know, if you're fighting at this level, you really need to have that. Otherwise, you're wasting a lot of energy. Right now, you say, okay, I'm in a bad position, but let's save some energy now. And then hopefully when I can reverse the table, tables, I'm going to do it to you. That was a nice knee. I really like that knee. Last minute of round number two, Steve Carl now with a much better position working over Josh Berkman. Showed up just looking for a Darce choke. Just looking for a Darce. If he can lock his hands. Ooh, yeah, no, no. Josh is coming. Can he lock his own hands? I can't tell from this camera angle. But 20 seconds. If he's got it, oh, he's out. He came close. A straight armor coming up. Oh. Carl just scrambling and fishing for anything. Berkman's going to tie him up for the last six seconds. We'll have a third round when we return to the World Series of Fighting Six. Back in Coral Gables, nervous times for Brandy Lynn Berkman and Legend Berkman watching his dad do work, hoping that they return to Salt Lake City Everybody with a brand new shiny belt. As we get ready for round number three, Steve Carl in the black trunks, Josh Berkman in the white trunks. Two rounds complete so far, Boss Rutten put you on the spot. Yeah. Brandon has control of this one. I, I, I think, you know, it could be one-on-one. -on -one. It's uh, very close. Yeah. It's very close. Take a round with Steve Carl, though. Both guys are slowing down. I expect, like, second wind kicking in in a little bit. Maybe even in the fourth. Boss, I know you always prepare for a five-round war, but in, in those guys' minds, do you think they came into this thing thinking, I'm going to go five? I know what they tell you on TV and in interviews, that I'm going to end it fast, and I'm going to psychologically put them down, but do you think in their minds they're thinking this thing could be an all-out 25-minute war? You know, you should always, always count it's going to be a 25-minute war. What I used to do, and then it's just for three rounds, I would, I would prepare seven, six-minute rounds. So what you're saying is don't count on pulling a Marlon Moraes and getting it done in 32 seconds? No, that's in a title fight. You know, and Moraes is just, and also lighter weights. I'm, I'm saying this again, I'm, uh, you know, they have the same lung capacity, same heart as us, only they're much, much lighter, so they can go faster, they have more energy. Man, he's got it back on the ground. Side and control for Steve Carl now. Steve Carl doing a great job noticing that uh, Berkman is tired, puts his knee on his yeah. belly, now goes to a full mount. This is not good. Oh, Berkman, there was a little tiny moment he could have tried to go for an escape. Can't do it now anymore. He needs to push the hip, put at least one half guard, and from there work to the full guard. He cannot have him in the mount. I mean, Steve Carl's is too powerful of a fighter to let him have this position for too long. Yeah, you can. He's going to go for an armbar now. See, he's setting it up. He's going to set up some, some punches. Bergman feels it coming, turns the other way. Does he give up the back in the sense of, I've got to fight something off? Uh-oh, uh -oh. This could be a problem. It's in deep. He can grab the wrist from Bergman and pull his right shoulder back, and that's it. Steve this Carl's got to choke in. He's really good with this. Steve Carl should pull his right shoulder backwards, put a monkey grip over his own shoulder, and then pull the right shoulder backwards. I actually finished the guy like that in Japan with it. I always mention this because then you know it really works. Bergman is still good. One artery still flowing. Wow. In. Whoa, nice. He's going to go probably for the darts again. Oh, no, Bergman knows that too. Well, that was some impressive defense by Josh Bergman. Wow. 
scary. ago Carl had the mount on Berkman and he also took the back and it looked like he had the rear naked choke in deep enough and here's Josh Berkman now trying to apply the guillotine. Oh he's gonna do a pull your neck guy maybe. He's gonna throw his uh, left leg over to help. He's got a crank, he's got a crank, he's got an underhook now. This could be oh, it. This is tight. He's got his legs. He should buck up now. He should arch backwards, Bertman. Oh, he doesn't have his hands gripped, I see no. now. The other one is free. He should lock his hands. And, and Carl's still, got hold of that wrist. Yeah, that's that's a strong grip that he has there. You know, it's a monkey grip, and then you pull your elbow down. It's very hard to break that. Bertman has to watch out with the arm around the neck because he can be reversed. If uh, Carl now locks up with his left foot, the right foot of Bergman, and traps the right arm of Bergman, he can push him to the left. So Bergman now with the mount, with 50 seconds to go in round three of five. He should go to a high mount. Wow, look at that. Always go for high mount. And Carl comes right back, drops his head, and he finds himself it's in trouble again. 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 Bergman scrambles out, and now he's looking for it again. Yeah, Carl felt it coming. He rolled on his back. He knows the submission. It's very smart. Looking for an arm choke now, an arm triangle. He's got to jump over to the other side, but he's got only 15 seconds. Two legs, jump over to the other side. Not anymore. So we will see a fourth round when we return to Coral Gables. This isn't a sport for just normal people. I don't know if you want to call it a challenge or you just want to call it straight crazy. Now I'm where I need to be and I plan on going to the top. Can't sing and dance so I might as well punch somebody in the face. Significant strike, Steve Carl, 20, Josh Berkman, Buddy, ready? 7. Buddy, ready? Fourth round of five with the welterweight belt on the line at the World Series of Fighting. Both guys are slowing down. You know, that Carl last round to was a tough though. one to score, boss, yep. because I think early on Steve Carl certainly had the edge, but I think the latter half of it, Josh Berkman might have stolen it. I think so, too. I think so, too. But now here, right from the bat, Carl takes it down. He knows this is the best game plan. Put him on his back and go for submissions. Play the game you're good at. There we go. Oh, he missed it. I thought he was going for a Peruvian necktie also. Uh-oh, triangle choke is dead. He's better pull out now. Both these guys are just fishing for arm bars. Triangle chokes. Guillotines. And especially Carl, you know, his jiu-jitsu game is so top-notch. Yeah, pretty good submissions, is it? That's it. it. Is that it? Yeah, that's that it. it. That is it. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, I was just looking on my paper to see how many submission victories he had 15. This makes it 16, and I just didn't see it slip in. Steve Carl gets the win in Coral Gables and will leave the cage with a welterweight title. The tap came, but the official wanted, Troy Wall wanted to make sure that it was legit. He sets it up here, yep, passes it, puts it back, and now he pulls the head in, which is smart, so he can't pass the leg. He's gonna throw his right leg upwards. And hooking behind the foot. 
And Bergman knows this at this moment. There it is, the slip. And he can't pull it out. Right it was here. a very nice thing here, what he did, Steve Call, he kept up pulling the arm. And because he kept pulling the arm, Josh couldn't pull out. You see him tapping now? Right there. Yeah, he's with his here. left hand he was going, tap, 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 tap. It's really tight, it's over. Wow! Beautifully done. Josh Berkman is up and moving around, a little disappointed, but Steve Carl is your winner. We'll have the official awarding of the belt and talk to the champion when we return to Bank United Center in Coral Gables, Florida, live on NBCSN. The World Series of Fighting Six is brought to you by Boost Mobile. Be heard. Bank United Center saw an exciting fight as we sent it inside the cage. Jazz Securo has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight ends with a tap out and a triangle choke at one minute and two seconds of round number four. Your winner and new World Series of Fighting Welterweight World Champion, Steve World Series of Fighting, President Ray Cepho making the presentation. We said it inside now and Joey, Var Joey Varner. Steve Carl, it's been a long, hard road to get here tonight. Lots of blood, sweat, and tears. Put into words for you, for us right now, the emotions you're feeling. Uh, I feel a little disappointed. I felt like I could have performed a lot better. But uh, there's something not a lot of people know. Two weeks ago, I was in the emergency room with torn muscles and a bulging disc in my back. I'm able to walk, and uh, my last two weeks have been nothing but uh, rest and rehab to get here. I was bound and determined to take this fight, and uh, I'm really not really happy with my performance. I was so tired I wanted to quit there a couple of times. Uh, Josh is a really game opponent, and he kept bringing it. Uh, honestly, I didn't think I could do it for a while, but uh, you know, my cornerman just kept pushing me through it, and here we are. We did it. It was an intense back and forth grappling battle, submission attempts, escapes, positions, reversals. What was your strategy coming into this fight? Uh, it was just a blast. Just keep going and uh, not quit, but man, Josh made me want to. Uh, I've never felt that tired in a fight before, and that's really disheartening to be in this cage and know what you want to do, but your body just doesn't respond. Uh, that was the worst feeling about the whole thing, but uh, I gotta thank the fans and all my family that came out. You guys are great. Without you guys, I wouldn't be here right now. Thanks everybody at home. I love you guys. You're the best. Congratulations once again. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, the welterweight champion of the world, World Series of Fighting, Steve Carl. Well, at the end of a great night of fights here, Boz Rutten, your final thoughts on what we saw here at World Series of Fighting 6. We saw incredible footwork from Moraes, unbelievable knockout. Fitch did a great job as well, just engage him. My God, such a great fighter. And of course here, Steve Carl, with everything that happened to him in the, in the last two weeks, I think this is an unbelievable fight for him. No question about it. So congratulations to Steve Carl, winner of inaugural World Series of Fighting Championship belt. There's more mixed martial arts action as the World Series of Fighting heads to Vancouver, British Columbia on December 7th for another action-packed telecast. And be sure to catch the rising stars of the World Series of Fighting on Future Champs. So on behalf of my partners, Boss Rutten and Joey Varner, Jazz Securo inside the cage, I'm Todd Harris saying so long from Bank United Center on the campus of the University of Miami, where Steve Carl is your World Series.